Hello and welcome to In The Hyperloop, my name is Blake. Today we have a jam-packed um, news update, news pod. First starting with The Boring Com Revolution, or Boring Proof Rock. Um, he runs a great YouTube channel about The Boring Company and I highly recommend you check it out. But he retweeted, I personally found this extremely useful, go check this hypermap out. It uh, displays routes, uh, feasibility, companies and teams, and real-time content. Um, if you go to their website, uh, you see a really cool um, view of like what the Hyperloop is, you know, what this uh, resource is. And if you look at the resource, it's just really amazing. We're going to be doing uh, more um, interesting content in partnership with Hypermap so in the future, so get ready. But um, if you take a look at one of the routes, like the um, Midwest routes or, or so, you'll see that you'll have news articles on the right, um, details about the route, and um, it's just gonna be built out um, as it goes uh, with new constructive feedback. Um, so stay tuned as this is um, still being built <laughs> uh, using feedback. So um, I highly recommend you check out um, and give hypermap.co a look. And um, yeah, we're looking forward uh, to the future. Um, next, going on to uh, Heart Hyperloop um, from the Netherlands. Uh, yesterday, they had one of the heads of designs, the head of design, um, Jose Sanchez, talk about the design process of Hyperloop and insights um, and the priorities uh, from users. And so that's really interesting. We've reached out to um, Delft to see if uh, they have any recording of this talk because it will be really cool to hear. So stay tuned on that. Next, we're going to be going into kind of a lot of um, competition between different uh, Virgin Hyperloop 1 and Hyperloop TT um, or HTT um, regarding um, different feasibility studies and um, routes. So this one is about Missouri dreaming of traveling of 700 miles an hour. Um, this has to do with Virgin Hyperloop 1 sending out a request for proposals asking for states to bid on a chance to host a six mile certification track that would test the commercial use of Hyperloop technology. So really check it out, it's behind a paywall. Um, but as we go through here, um, well, this one's about uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and the boring company's tunnel, tunnel boring machine has started. Um, it's gonna start chugging away, um, hopefully finished and everything done before 2021 for CES. Um, but stay tuned, they have a cool webcam um, and the Boring Revolution YouTube channel can <laughs> goes way more into depth about this. Um, and that, uh, next going on to Toom Hyperloop, um, they've had kind of um, some sad news in that they're going to be not taking part in the next SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition in 2020. Um, they're actually going to uh, develop what they've built um, further into an actual Hyperloop company. Um, they're going to focus efforts towards developing and building full-scale Hyperloop. We've had our minds on for years. Uh, through this next installment of the competition has not yet been announced, which is true. This decision has been taken because we believe in the need for, to move quicker towards the development of a full-scale Hyperloop system. For this, we need to collaborate more closely with TU Mankin in this endeavor, which is the university. Um, we will thank all the people and companies that have supported us over the last four years, particularly our main sponsor, Airbus, for believing in us from the very beginning. We aspire to continue these collaborations and next steps. Uh, we can't wait to see what the future holds for us and we best wish, wish best wishes to everybody uh, going in the Hyperloop uh, uh, concept further. Make sure you stay tuned as we'll reveal our future plans in more detail soon. Really exciting. So this is kind of like a Delft Hyperloop turning into a Heart Hyperloop potentially. Um, looking forward to that. Um, Swiss Loop is working hard. Um, a typical night, <laughs> Friday night. Our pod is going to be coming together more and more and we'll need a name soon. Our team is already brainstorming, but we want to hear your ideas too. Comment below this post if you, what you think we should name our pod. Um, the 2020 pod after comments and suggestions. Um, so yeah, and you'll be invited to the per first public viewing uh, which will be and a small gift from Swiss Loop. So that's really nice. Uh, good job, Swiss Loop, for kind of making this uh, uh, 
you know, public <laughs> for, and they've named their pod other things in the years past, and so have other teams. Someday we should have like a little quiz <laughs> of all the Hyperloop pod competition teams. This is from Abhishkar Hyperloop in India, um, another pod competition team. They gave a really good um, TEDx talk, um, and I would highly recommend uh, you stay tuned um, to the video of that, or I'm sorry, it's right here. Um, really recommend you check it out. Um, we will be watching it after this. We have not yet seen it, but um, just big shout out to Abhishkar Hyperloop for uh, for working hard and getting the word out. Um, next is this uh, website. Um, so as we said, you know, Virgin Hyperloop One is working with many different places like Missouri and Kansas and St. Louis, and um, you know, trying to uh, see it, you know who wants a test track, and also West Virginia. Well, it turns out HCT is working with Northeast Ohio um, Coordinating Agency. Um, so this is their website, and they recently had a, um, um, a public forum to talk about this. Um, Hyperloop in the city of Cleveland um, and Pittsburgh and Chicago. So really, you see both, you know, Mork, who also we've done a, a recent interview with, um, Vine for Pittsburgh, Columbus, Chicago, whereas um, this organization um, and HTT wants uh, Cleveland or Pittsburgh, Cleveland, uh, Chicago, and there's you know the two cities of uh, Cleveland, which is right above Columbus. So it'll be interesting to see um, where this will be going. <laughs> um, but you can see these different kind of routes of major interstates, and you know theoretically thinking in the future, you know how could Hyperloop um, be on top of one of these interstates. Um, and then, uh, as we get out of here, um, we're just going to look at some of the uh, tweets that came out uh, of, of this um, to this public meeting. Um, the results show promise um, that this is significant system could be a reality and operational in years to come. Um, CEO, co-founder and chairman Dirk Alphorn um, from HDT, we believe this region is perfect for this new technology and this is only system makes economic sense more than just speed. Um, they prioritize regional strength. Um, that's good. So they're describing the technology um, because tubes are enclosed, system is immune from weather. Um, yeah, so it's just a really interesting talk. We're still waiting to see if... Um, uh, there's any video from this presentation. Accelerates uh, will not be more than 1G. And the HTT system is much bigger diameter tubes than uh, Virgin Hyperloop 1 right now. Um, so you could theoretically put big cargo containers on an HTT, um, whereas you would have to make um, the Hyperloop 1 in some smaller containers, and that's what Global um, uh, Hyperloop 1's um, partner uh, uh, Global Port uh, Dubai, I forgot exactly their name. That's what they're doing in developing the smaller modular containers. Um, but as we go back to this, public support is very important on this project. This is a feasibility study. We're not putting shovels in the ground, but we're looking to determine whether this makes sense. Um, taking questions. Um, yep, they're talking about how the freeway system uh, marginalized um, certain populations in cities when they were built and um, Hyperloop One says this matters to us. Um, this will this is intended to be a project beneficial to the community, not harmful. Fares are also something we're concerned about. So pricing of tickets. Um, do project partners have financial stakes in the success of this project? State Department of Transportations are there to develop transportation for the state. Same with um, MPOs. Um, that's the benefit, the development. Um, benefits will be the benefit in the long run. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, NOCA, the regional organization, will not build and operate the Hyperloop, but private company will do that. Um, what is the plans for land acquisition? In general, one of the reasons why the route was proposed was because of the toll road, which could provide right of way. Um, yeah, they're trying to stay away from private land. Um, Hyperloop also offers the ability to bury the tube, um, which has the least environmental impact and is least objectionable to landowners. Um, 
So yeah, we intend to move freight almost right at night, mostly at night, avoiding peak hours, could operate a system um, 24-7, would give additional capacity for freight pods through both, um, though both, both can operate together. So that's really nice. Um, we don't really see Hyperloop 1 um, saying, well, they, they say that, you know, uh, cargo pods and <laughs> making sure the test uh, um, system will be operational first before putting people in it, but um, we haven't really heard of like cargo pod and then a Hyperloop 1 passenger pod going in the same tube, so um, we'll hear more about that later. Um, when it comes to public transit, this is not competing with, but hopefully augment or even provide new revenue streams for the public transit. As for use of funds, um, NOCA invested $100,000, part of a long-range strategic planning that was, that, has, that was limited in use. Uh, NOCA does support public transit. Pre preserving existing infrastructure is very important to us. Hyperloop is also an opportunity to fix what's wrong and start with a blank slate. How can make transportation work first and last mile? Um, we need to make sure we're able to integrate with what's already out there. Um, those things are important. If it takes 30 minutes to get to the station, that's not helping. Uh, that's true. Um, next, we're going to go back to this um, uh, will Hyperloop prediction be hyper wrong? It's a kind of an interesting article um, on the Wall Street Journal. Again, you might need a pay um, paywall, um, but uh, it's just interesting how other industries, um, perhaps short to long distance airplane industries are feeling threatened by Hyperloop, um, in this case, Boeing, um, and just kind of throwing shade. <laughs> but uh, Next, we're going to go to this uh, New York Magazine. In 2029, a Hyperloop could turn Columbus, Ohio into a suburb of Chicago. It's a really interesting kind of thought uh, process. Um, I'm just going to read it out just briefly of this um, kind of futuristic uh, article. The other day in Chicago, a friend who lives in Columbus, Ohio, 360 miles away, texted me a last minute dinner reservation. I walked to the Michigan Avenue Hyperloop station and because I had just missed a downtown Columbus bound pod, waited for a full 29 seconds for the next. It was a little unnerving to spend 30 minutes in a seemingly stationary compartment while hurtling across three Midwestern states. No passing landscapes, no shutter, no bounce, no engine hum, no rumble of weeds, just total stillness at 600 miles an hour. Changing time zones gave me an unaccounted hour, and I briefly considered filling it with a quick detour to Pittsburgh, another 360 mile round trip. That's, I think, sums up pretty perfectly of what every Hyperloop um, interested person uh, dreams about, um, no matter where they are in the world. <laughs> so it's a really interesting article. I'd highly recommend you check it out. Uh, the link will be in the description of the video. Um, next, um, Hyperloop Connected, which um, is a part of Delft Hyperloop um, and Delft University. Um, they have a great website um, called hyperloopconnected.org where they are um, collecting a lot of really interesting articles about Hyperloop. Um, I'd highly recommend you check it out. Um, they also have a map. What does that mean? Oh, hyper okay, that's just a little Google map. Um, but they released a really interesting article um, just recently, oh no, um, designing the Hyperloop tube geometry and material choice. Um, it's brief, really short read. I would highly recommend you check it out, share it. Um, thank you, uh, Delft Hyperloop, um, for uh, continuing to post new articles. And anybody can submit an article. Uh, you just need to get in contact with them and click their contribute button. So good job. Uh, next, um, Hyper Poland. Um, they are doing their phased approach to Hyperloop. Um, this is a really interesting um, company to watch. Uh, they're getting a lot of traction. Um, most of the views on this YouTube channel uh, come from the Hyperloop Poland um, videos, so I think they're on to something. Um, and we're just going to take a look quickly at this. Um, yeah, this is uh, really interesting, so we're just going to quickly look at this, and we haven't really seen this video either so no sound yet over 30 team members 15 partner companies one goal
And thank you, Hyper Poland, for inviting us out to, for this um, for this new demonstration. Unfortunately, we were not able to go, but we really appreciate it. Microsoft is very excited to be here and supporting Hyper Poland with one of our grants for the most technologically advanced and exciting startups in the year. The team have shown incredible Advarga and we're excited to see the demonstration and we wish them all the luck in the future bringing this world-changing technology to life. Three discussion panels, 13 speakers. Hundred and fifty guests from ten countries. Oh my god, it was levitating. And it went by really fast. I wonder what they said. Moving up to a four hundred and fifteen kilometers per hour. Nice. Well done, Hyper Poland. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, we look forward to hearing more news and definitely check out this full um, article on Hyper Poland um, in the link in the description below. Next is the Kansas City Tech Council. Um, again, you know, we've heard that Hyperloop One <laughs> has really um, wanting to build this route. Um, because there's really not much in in the way. Uh, it's just right above the highway. And so this is just Kansas City Tech Council reannouncing that they're a proud member of the Missouri Hyperloop uh, Coalition. Um, so I'd recommend you just check it out. Um, we have heard um, that, you know, things are moving so fast um, that, you know, it's hard to keep all these different organizations and groups uh, together. So it's nice to see that, um, you know, these routes, even though they're so long and so large and it's, this has never happened before, um, they're still moving together forward. Um, next is the West Virginia, um, John Chambers College of Business and Economics. Uh, wish you could travel to your favorite city and the blink of an eye, join Hyperloop One during our campus visit tonight. Um, November 21st at 5 p.m. Uh, local uh, to hear their mission for changing how the world travels and connects with our state. Um, we've seen really interesting um, tweets from the U.S. Uh, representative for West Virginia, um, a Democrat. He is very pro Hyperloop. We've never seen that uh, level of, um, you know, kind of. Uh, you know, interest from anybody. Uh, so, you know, it's really interesting and I'd highly recommend you check it out. Um, just kind of, you know, exploring the partnership. Um, and unfortunately that page was not found, um, but I'm just trying to find uh, more information. There we go. Um, so Virgin Hyper One to visit WVU as West Virginia prepares to submit an RFP for a certification and testing center. Um, so West Virginia has invited, has been invited, so it's an invite RFP um, for Virgin Hyperloop One to create a certification and testing center to establish regulatory standards. Virgin Hyperloop One will be on campus to meet with experts from the state of West Virginia and West Virginia University for discussion about the resources of West Virginia can offer on research and development, operational capacities, technology infrastructure, maintenance, talent, and security needed to move people and goods. Richard Branson, uh, Virgin Hyperloop One will change the future, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. We haven't really heard much about this. Um, it will be interesting to hear how the event goes and we hope uh, there's video. Um, and that's about it. Um, we just did a interview with Mork. Uh, highly recommend you check it out and um, stay in the loop, what, tell us what you think. Um, also check out the HyperMap, um, give them uh, feedback 
and um, you know you can get in contact uh, with them um, by the contact us button. So uh, that's it from In the Hyperloop. Uh, stay in the loop.